Jay, you got to work on some of the best net code in the industry. Um, perhaps, perhaps what I would consider to be the best lineage of net code, the Quake lineage through through to Counter Strike, through to Call of Duty, and, and then on to Apex Legends, and then other other variants. Um, and, and it's not just a, it's not just net code; it's a way of life, right? Yes. So let's let's dive in on a let's do a little a rapid fire section. Okay. Um, and uh, we're we're just gonna. You know, it's it's sort of like uh, I'm, I'm just going to ask a question, and let's just get let's just get your your quickest hottest take, okay? okay. And uh, and then we'll move on. And we'll do this, and we'll dive in details uh, in, in in the section after this. So okay. uh, a bit of a, a bit of gimme for the first one: UDP versus yes. TCP. UDP. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Why? Why? Okay. Um, a lot of reasons. Um, head of line blocking is really the major one. Mm -hmm. um, you you can't um, even if you have a game in which mm -hmm. you need you know uh, reliable data like let's say you're just sending inputs yeah. um, you don't want to have to wait for the retransmission of a packet that gets dropped when you could send all of the inputs in the latest packet so UDP is even yeah. superior for things like that. Amen. Okay. Uh, Quake style versus Unreal style. Uh, Quake style, for sure. Okay. Um, why? What's the difference, and why? So there's a there's a lot of differences. Um, the the biggest difference, of course, is in the Quake style of networking with snapshots. Um, you get full mm -hmm. state updates of the entire world at once, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and critically, that update is time stamped, right? So yep. you have everything about the world. And you know when it's timestamped. Um, the Unreal Networking, on the other hand, uh, you will get some updates for some objects. Mm -hmm. um, they won't necessarily be timestamped, so you don't know exactly how old they are. Yeah. Um, and um, you know the the kind of tricky bit, really, with games uh, is that games are about objects interacting, right? Like mm -hmm. they're not about objects in isolation. And so when something happens in the game, you're changing state on multiple objects at the same time. This yep. impacted this, this touched this, this shot this. So um, to not have any guarantees about what order you're getting those things and whether you're getting them at the same time. And then furthermore, how old that data is, you know, I think it's very difficult to compensate for that appropriately. Um, and um, bingo. You got to kind of do it per mechanic. Whereas the thing about Quake is that it's the networking just works and then you build your gameplay on top. You don't think about it. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've got to agree with that. Interpolation versus extrapolation. Depends. It depends mm -hmm. on the, on the, what exactly you're trying to get done in the game or the mechanic. Generally speaking, if you can, interpolation. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, sometimes. Um, like a good example is, is uh, you know, there's a reason that all uh, kind of melee attacks in, uh, in shooters feel like shotgun blasts, right? Yeah. You can't really... <laughs> literally, they're literally implemented as invisible shotgun blasts. Right. You can't really <laughs> touch, push, pull the other guy, change his yep. state directly. Um, and mm -hmm. so if you need to do that, then sometimes you got to extrapolate. Got it. Got it. Okay. Or with sports, that could be another reason. Good point. Uh, okay. Determinism mm -hmm. or sending state? Sending state, mm -hmm. I think, is, is almost always ideal. Um, mm -hmm. the, the challenges with not sending state, aside from the fact that you have to make it deterministic, which can be a challenge in itself, especially mm -hmm. in the new world order of cross-platform everything. Yeah. Um, you know, you've got to deal with late joins and how you deal with stuff like mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm, you've got to mm -hmm. deal with um, the spiral of death of what happens if you can't run S enough simulation to bound. catch up. Yep. Um, yep. You know, so these things are all kind of go away if you just send some state. Yep. Good point. Uh, client server versus peer to peer. Uh, client server, for sure. Why? Um, Why? Well, you know, I, so here's one of the things about peer-to-peer -peer, right even in fighting games I, and i love this argument right fighting game guys are really big on the fact that their games have to be peer-to-peer -peer because they want to be directly connected to that guy mm -hmm. right so they imagine 
uh, you've got point A, that's me. You've got point B, that's the other guy. Adding a server in the middle has to make that worse, right? But yeah. no. But it's just right? not how it is. Yeah. <laughs> right. Glenn is the expert of this at the moment, right? Yeah. Like, you know, there's no, re there's actually, it's not true that the shortest point is the internet is not a series internet. of tubes, everybody. No. And the internet yeah. is not optimized for my house connecting to your house. It is yeah. optimized in a lot of ways for me getting to Amazon. It is optimized all the way from me getting to Google's cloud, right? It's actually optimized. If it's optimized for anything, it's optimized for cost. For cost yeah. But you could kind of look at it as being, it's optimized to get you to the nearest internet exchange point, maybe. Right. That's right. maybe one way to look at it. And I'll right. bet if you're in Santa Monica and you're playing against someone, you might be going down to one Wilshire in downtown LA and then back to the other dude's house. Yep. It's just how it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so if you could have your server closest to there, mm -hmm. it might not be any worse it might even be better you know yeah, i've actually browsing, seen it so. i've seen it better my my worst experience shipping a game was a peer-to-peer -peer game yeah and yeah. Uh, the inconsistency of peer-to-peer -peer is just tragic yeah um, okay it, yeah so here you go so another one uh player hosting versus dedicated hosted servers dedicated for sure why um multiple reasons um one is that um Upload bandwidth is is not great still in a lot mm -hmm. of places. You know, when you look at a lot of common home internet connections, download speeds can be extremely high. Like I, yep. here, I have 300 megabits down and I have yep. like 20 up, right? Yep. So it's really optimized for download. And so when you become the server and, you know, depending on the player count of your game, the bandwidth usage, right? You have to send everyone's data to them um, and you can really be the bottleneck. And on top of that, it can be really challenging actually to measure that appropriately in your title. And so knowing whether or not someone's a good server can actually be quite a challenge to get right. Mm -hmm. um, and then on top of that, it, you have the reliability. It, it, it may not even be a constant thing. They might be on Wi-Fi and just cook right. it. And also you, this is a problem with matchmaking too, right? This is why matchmaking yeah. is such a headache. Uh, how do you deal with the conflicting issues of uh, bandwidth, upload bandwidth on one side, but latency on the other? Do you, do you uh, go with the guy who, you know. NAT type? NAT type? Right. Maybe they're, Connectivity? Maybe they're can everyone yeah. connect to them? Does it have to go through a relay? You know. Yep. These are yep. things that are not, there's uh, no uh, right uh, answer. Uh, 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 uh. Host migration. Yes. And then Kill finally me. host migration, which, Kill me. which, yeah, which you don't want to have to write first of all, yeah, but no, no one even wants to sit through, even if you do get it yeah. right, it still sucks. Yeah. The experience is not yeah. good. Um, and realistically yeah. speaking, if, if you can't afford your servers for your game, you're not really monetizing it very well. Right. I mean, like practically speaking, what, what these server costs, you know, if your game is optimized as well as it can be for fitting as many th things mm -hmm. on a server as you can, even if your game's free, you know, you should be able to make that work. You know, the, the, the one case where it's really a negative is when your game is like on life support and you really want to keep it available for people to play, yeah, a minimum you get spend. to a minimum. Yeah. So there's a minimum spent. Yeah. That's the one negative, but who mm -hmm. plan, you know, you can't choose all of your game development based on, having to keep your game on life support that's not the that's not the path to success right yeah um, plan for success so. okay how about last question mm -hmm. cloud versus bare metal uh you know i i don't i don't have a strong opinion on this because i don't have a lot of experience but I, we go cloud because we're a small mm -hmm. group and i can't be managing bare metal Mm -hmm. um, but I have not worked, for example, with Multiplay, who does bare metal. Um, and so yeah. I'm actually not very aware of the pros and cons of that. Um, cool. But I would love okay. to hear your take. My, my take is a, a mix of a mix is good. And I, I see surprisingly good performance on cloud these days. Um, yeah. My The only thing with cloud that kind of gets me is that high egress bandwidth charge is, is mm -hmm. a, bit of a, a bit of a kicker. Here's the hard truth. The internet doesn't care about your game. After all the blood, sweat, and tears you put into making your game, you launch, and some players get terrible network performance. What can you do about it? Build your own internet? This is why we created Network Next. Network Next is a radically new way of linking networks together. It's a new internet. One where networks compete on a neutral marketplace to carry your game's traffic. Network Next puts you, the game developer, in control of the network. We monitor every player's network performance and you choose when to accelerate them. Not only will you see better network performance for your players, you'll also have the security of knowing that if one network is congested, we switch to another in seconds.
Now you control the network.